Today we're going to be talking about regexes in the context of orcs. So a regex is basically a way to describe a pattern that appears in the data, whether that be a name followed by a symbol, whether that be a list of different names you want to find, or a date, or some other sort of construct that appears in the data that you want to either filter out or you want to keep. So the problem with learning regexes is you typically find these really complex examples, say something like, I don't know, this one right here. What this does is goes and finds a date. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for what we're doing today. You'll see something like this, have no idea how it works, and think regexes are far more complex than they actually are. But the nice thing about regexes is you can actually go and break this down into its core components. And once you understand each of these core components, it's actually a very simple thing to understand. So if we go and run this, what it's going to do is basically validate that all of the dates in this file are actually in the correct format. Now, when I say this isn't perfect, what I mean is if we go and put something in here like the... 31st of November, this is going to be a valid date. And the reason why this happens is because validating a date is much, much more complex than this, but this will make sure it's in the correct form. There are much more complex things than this, like say validating an email address, because email addresses are an absolute meme. You might think you understand how an email address works, you don't, and trying to make a regex for that is absolute hell. Now, by the end of this video, you should be able to look at this regex statement, and even though it's going to take you a little bit of time to actually read, you should be able to break down every single construct in here and say, okay, I know what the digit option means, I know what this means here, I know what this means here, so on and so forth, and you should be able to break this statement down and potentially go and modify it if you want to. Okay, so we have this second data file here. It's nothing too complex, but for what we're doing today, it should be perfectly fine. So... When you want to do a regex in orc, it's always going to be inside these slashes. Even if you want to use, say, the regex inside a conditional, the regex part always has to be in these slashes. So let's go and just run it with a print statement just so we can actually see what we're doing. And we're just going to run it on the data2 file. So the first thing I want to mention is about regex operators. The regex operators basically let you specify some part of the regex statement or something you want to do in the regex statement. So for example, if we use the caret symbol here, this means match at the start of the line. So we can say, let's match at the start of the line where you see the string this. So what this is going to do is print out all of the lines that have the word this at the start of the line. And in this case, we have these two lines here. So you don't actually have to include any text here. We could also just go and include the caret symbol by itself, and this will just match on any start of the line. And as you may expect, you can also go and match on the end of the line as well. So the way we do that is by including a dollar sign instead. So we can include this by itself. It will match on any line end, which obviously every single line has a line end. Or we could say that we want to see the symbols NE and then the line end. So in this case, it's just going to match on this line here. Now, if you happen to not know exactly what symbol you want to match on, what you can do is go and include a dot, and this basically means match on any symbol. So if we go and run this, as we can see, it's going to match on the first symbol of the line, and then say, okay, that line has now been found. But we can actually go and include this with something else we used before. So let's say that instead of just having the dot there, what we do is go and include the line end symbol, and let's say that we want to have, I don't know, uh, D-A-T. So match on D-A-T, any other symbol after that, and then the line ends. So this is going to match on this line here and this line here. So if we go and do this, as we can see, we have those lines now. Now, depending on which version of Orc you're using, it may or may not match on the null character. So in the case of GNU Orc, which is what I have on my system, in regular mode, it does. But if you're running in POSIX mode, then it won't. Now, the next couple of symbols, when used by themselves, don't really do anything that productive. So the first one we have is the asterisk. So what this is basically going to do is repeat the previous symbols as many times you need to do so to actually have a match. So let's say that we had, I don't know, A asterisk. This will be matching on A, 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 so on and so forth. Or if we have a symbol before it, let's say that we have D, A, T. So this will match on D, A, T, A or DAT, or DATA with any number of A's after it. So if we go and run this now, as we can see, we have all of these lines returned. 
Now, the asterisk is very frequently paired with the dot operator because what this means is match on any symbol any number of times. So if we go and say run something very simple, like let's say we have a start of the line, we have an end of the line, and then we want to have any sort of data in between. So once again, this is the same as matching on every single line. But we can also go do something like, say, have, I don't know, the word this have any sort of data after it, and then we want the line to end in the word data, and it matches on these two lines here. One that's very similar to the asterisk is the plus. So the asterisk would repeat the previous symbol any number of times. The plus is repeat the previous symbol one or more times. So a good way to compare these two is let's say we search for DATI. Now, none of the lines in this data set contain DATI. But if we have an asterisk after that, we can actually get rid of the I and all of those lines are returned. But in the case of using a plus, there has to be at least one I with the letters DAT before it. So this one doesn't return anything. The next one we have is the question mark. So this takes the previous symbol and says, okay, there must be zero or one copies of this. So if we do something like D-A-T-I again, this is going to match on D-A-T-I and D-A-T. And in this case, it's going to match on D-A-T. Now, sometimes you might want to have one part be true or the other part to be true. So the way we do this is with alternation. So this uses the pipe symbol. So let's say we want the word more to be found or more with a lowercase. I didn't mention this earlier, but regexes are going to be case sensitive inside of ORC, and in most languages they are case sensitive. So if we run this now, as we can see, we have this line here, this line here, and this line here. But if we go and just search for just the lowercase version of more, in this case, we don't actually have the one with the capital on it. I've gone and modified the data set a bit so we can go and work with interval expressions. So as we can see, we have data with two A's here, data with three A's, and then data with four A's. So an interval expression basically gives us more control over how many numbers of symbols appear than what you get with the asterisk, the question mark, and the plus. So we can go and say something like, we want to have between two and three A's. So in this case, it returns this line right here and this line right here. But we don't just have to say it like that. We can say that we want to have, I don't know, two or more A's. And that returns all of those lines. Or let's say that we want to have exactly two A's. And then that just returns this line here. Now, everything we've looked at up until this point can be combined with grouping. So let's say that we want to go and put these two symbols right here inside of a group. And then let's have a plus after it. So instead of saying repeat the previous symbol, this is now going to say repeat the previous group. So either have two A's or have four A's. So in this case, as we can see, it returns these lines here. Now, the last basic operator we have to look at is bracket expansion. So this is fairly simple. Let's say that we want to do the more example again, but we're going to rewrite it a little bit differently. So ORE, and then inside of bracket expansion, what we're going to have is capital M and M. So when you do bracket expansion, it's going to take one of the symbols in here and then try to match with that symbol. So either match with the capital M or match with the lowercase M. So in this case, as we can see, it matches on any line that has more, regardless of whether more starts with a capital or not. Now, let's stick with this previous one we had and modify it a little bit. So if we go and include a caret in here, this doesn't mean at the start of the line. This means that symbol isn't present. So anything inside of this bracket expansion, when there is a caret there, has to not be on the line. So in this case, any lines that contain ORE and don't contain a capital M or an M just before it are going to be returned. So in this case, no lines get returned. Now, sometimes you want to do a regex search and include some of the special characters inside of the search string itself rather than being used as the special symbol. So let's say you wanted to use something like the dot as something that's in the line rather than something that is being used as matching on any symbol. So the way we do that is by including a backslash just before it. So if we include a dot, this matches on any line, and then a backslash before the dot will treat the dot as if it's a part of the line, so in this case, nothing is returned. Now, there are some special backslash sequences that do exist. So say backslash T will match on a tab symbol, backslash N will match on a new line, and backslash R will match on a carriage return. There are plenty of others, but those are the main ones you're going to be using. Another big one we have is character classes and range expressions. So rather than having to use a bracket expansion and say, okay, we want to match on the letters, for example, 
A, B, C, D, E, F, so on and so forth, until you get to the end of the alphabet, there is a shorthand way we can go and do this, and we can say A to Z. Or we could do something like capital A to capital Z, or we could do some numbers like, let's say, 0 to 9, or we could even start from later in the sequence, so let's say 5 to 9 instead. And these range expressions can be combined together, so we could do something like A to Z, capital A to capital Z, and 0 to 9, and this will basically match on any single instance of any of these symbols. Now, if you want to match on the entire sequence, there is a way that is a bit more self-documenting. So, the way we do that is with a character class. So let's say that we wanted to include the symbols, for example, 0 to 9. So, instead of writing out 0 to 9, what you can do is include a second set of square brackets, and then inside of colons, write the symbol digit, and this is going to match on any number from 0 to 9. You can also do things like, say, alnum, which means alphanumeric. So that's the same thing as A to Z, capital A to capital Z, and 0 to 9. You can do alpha, which means match on any letter of the alphabet. So capitals and lowercase. If you just want to match on the lowercase, that will be the lower. And if you just want to match on uppercase, that is going to be upper. There are plenty of others, like messing around with the Unicode symbols and things like that, but these are the main ones you'll be using. Now, that's pretty much everything for the core regex stuff, but there is a little bit I still want to mention about Orc itself. So, with everything we've done up until this point, what we can go and do is something called a matching expression. So, instead of running the regex on the entire line, we can run the regex on just a subpart of the line. Typically, this is going to be done with a field. So... Let's say we want to run this matching expression right here. So what we're doing is saying on field 1, if it includes this regex, then print out field 1. So in this case, if it includes the characters IS in that sequence, it's going to return this line here and this line here. If we print out the entire line, we can see everything else that's actually being contained in that. So it's these two lines right here. And if you want to say that this field doesn't contain this regex, what you do is include an exclamation mark just before it, and that's going to go do that. So let's just go and print out just that field rather than the entire line. And as we can see, we have the line that has more, even, data, and data. Now, here's this regex we saw at the start of the video, and you should be able to understand a lot more what's actually happening here. So as we can see, we have a caret symbol here. This means it's at the start of the line. We have a dollar symbol here. This means it's at the end of the line. Okay, so everything inside of this right here is going to be between the start and the end of the line. So we have this first grouping here, which goes to this point right here. And the first thing we have is a bracket expansion with a zero inside of it and a question mark after it. So this means zero or one zero. I'm not really sure why it's in a bracket expansion. I found this regex on Stack Overflow though. The next thing we have is a range expression from 1 to 9, and then an alternation. So this alternates between this right here, and this section right here, and there's another alternation between this section right here. Now, in this point, we actually have a character class for the digit character class. And all of this first grouping here is just defining what the first number of the statement is going to be. Because after that, we have another bracket expansion which has a dot, a slash, or a dash in it. And as we saw at the start of this video, those are all of the accepted characters to separate a date. And then for the second part, it's very similar to the first. Once again, it's inside of another grouping. And then we have another bracket expansion. And the last part is another grouping. This part has one alternation in it. It can either have a digit repeated four times or a digit repeated two times with an interval expression. Hopefully that gives you a better idea about how regexes actually work, because you're not just going to see them in Orc. There are plenty of other places you'll see them, like if you're, say, a Vim user, when you're trying to search for parts of the document, you'll use a regex there, or just any sort of text processing, regexes are going to be very frequently used. So, I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters, so a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald Corbinian, Andre Nathan, David Montezar, Will, Chico Bento, Joseph Mitchell, Peter Lee, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you want to go support, I work them links down below to my Patreon, leave a page, subscribe, sell, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere, and then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute, if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.